Let's be honest, forms are simple and boring, but they don't have to be. Typically, we see a layout where we have a label and then an input stacked on one another. Another common layout is a label slash placeholder within the input itself, and then it disappears when you type into it. These layouts are fine and all, but we can make it better. With some simple CSS, we can create what is called a floating label. The label will start within the input itself, and then when focus into, the label will transition to above the input. Much better, right? At least I think so. Let's take a look at how we can create this. Before we do that, if you could, be sure to leave a like on this video as it really does help out the channel. Also, if you're not subscribed, consider doing so for more content like this. Alright, let's continue on with the video. To get started, we're going to create two files, index.html and style.css. Using Emmet, let's generate a new boilerplate and then link up the style sheet. Inside of the style sheet, let's do a simple reset on the margin, padding, and box sizing. To center everything up nice for this video, we'll target the body and set it to 100VH, the display to grid, and the place items property to center. This will center everything into the middle of the page. Back inside of the index.html file, let's generate the markup for the form input. We'll create a new div with a class of input. Within this div, we'll create a new input element with a type of text and an ID of username. Beneath this, we'll create a label element with the value and for attribute of username. This will sync the label and input to one another, allowing you to select the label and be focused into the input. Inside the browser, we'll have this basic boring form input centered into the middle of the screen. Now for the fun part, some CSS. We'll start by targeting the div with a class of input, wrapping the entire form input. We'll set the display to flex, flex direction to column, and the position to relative. Next, the input itself. Let's set the width to be 350 pixels. You could set this to take up the full width of your form, but for this example, I'll be setting a fixed value. Then a padding of eight pixels on the top and bottom, zero on the left and right, border to none to remove the default border, and then we'll add a border only to the bottom of one pixel solid and a color of 181.824. A font size of 14 pixels, font weight of 300, and then a transition of 300 milliseconds ease. Things are getting better, however, I don't know about you, but the default focus outline for inputs is pretty ugly. It's needed for accessibility, but we can improve it, so let's do that. On focus, we'll set the outline to none and the border color to purple. To improve the focus effect, we'll also be adding a box shadow with a vertical offset of one pixel and a color matching the border color. This is going to create a much more defined focus effect, which I really love. Next, we're going to need the label to be inside of the input itself. We'll start by setting the position to absolute. Since the div with the class of input was set to relative, the label is now set absolutely to it. The label still needs to be centered into the middle of the input. You might think easy. Let's do this with a top or bottom property. Now, you could do that, but there's a much better way. On the label, we'll set the height to be 100%, the display to flex, and align items to center. We'll also set a transition for the repositioning. This will set the label to the full height of the input, and using Flexbox, it'll be aligned directly in the center. This way, we don't have to guess where the center is with a top or bottom property. Also, if you were to alter, let's say, the text size, it'll always be in the center. When we focus and type into the input, the label is covering the value. Let's fix this by targeting the input in a focus state. Then using the plus selector, we can target the label since it's a direct sibling to the input. So what we're saying is when the input is in a focus state, we want to target the label. For the label, we're going to set a transform property and use a translate Y to move the label up on the Y axis by negative 27 pixels. And now when we focus into the input, the label will move above it. Since we added a transition, this will also happen smoothly over 300 milliseconds. One last issue we have is if we enter a value into the input, then focus out, the label drops back into the original place. To resolve this, we're going to set a placeholder on the input. It's very important to give the placeholder attribute a value of just space, otherwise this won't work properly. Now, in the style sheet, we're going to do a similar selector to the previous one, only this time we'll use the not selector and pass the value of placeholder shown. This will apply the transform property to the label as long as there is not a placeholder value. 
Once we type a value to the input, there is going to no longer be a placeholder value and therefore the label will stay in the transform position. And that's it. You now have a really cool form input you can add to your websites. If you want to see this form input used in an actual form, you can watch one of my previous videos where we build out a modern form using this floating label. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.